Today I want to talk about suspensive sales allowance. So, um, you know, uh, from the uh, general framework of how Zimura um, uh, taxes the taxpayers, uh, you start with gross income, uh, you list your gross income line items, then you go to exemptions, then you have income, then you go to allowable deductions, and you, the main section, of course, is Section 15 of the Income Tax Act. But there is a, a yet again another section that deals with a special kind of a deduction that is referred to as a special uh, a suspensive sale allowance. So it's governed by Section 17. So Section 17 says, if any person or any taxpayer has entered into an agreement with any person, or other person in respect of any property, the effect of which is that in the case of move a property, the ownership shall pass, or in the case of immovable property, transfer shall be effected from the uh, taxpayer to that other person upon uh, or after receipt by the taxpayer of the whole or a certain portion of the amount payable to the taxpayer under the agreement. The whole amount of that amount. Uh, the whole of that amount shall, for the purpose of this act, be deemed to have accrued the taxpayer on the date on which the agreement was uh, ended. So take note of this statement. The whole, am oh, oh, the, oh, the whole of that amount shall, for the purpose of this act, be deemed to have accrued to the taxpayer on the date on which the agreement was so ended. Provided that in the case of a uh, movable property, the commissioner taking into consideration any allowance he has made under paragraph G of subsection 2 of section 15 may make such further allowance as under the special circumstance of trade of the taxpayer seems to him reasonable in respect of all amounts which are deemed to have accrued under such agreement but which have not been received at the close of the taxpayer's accounting period. Number B, an allowance so made shall be included as income in his return for the following year of assessment and shall form part of the income of the said taxpayer and for the first year of assessment under this act. The amount to be included shall be the amount of any similar allowance made in the immediate preceding year of assessment in terms of the previous law. If any such agreement has been ceded or otherwise dis disposed of, of for valuable consideration by the taxpayer, then no such allowance shall be made by the commissioner in the year of assessment in which such session or disposal took place. Then in the case of immovable property, a commissioner shall deduct an allowance determined by applying the formula G multiplied by in brackets E minus in brackets F plus G close bracket divided by E in which D represents uh, that portion of the amount deemed to have accrued under such agreement, which is not receivable at the close of the taxpayer's accounting year, and E represents the amount deemed to have accrued under the agreement, and then F represents uh, the cost of the taxpayer of the move property, <laughs> yeah, so disposed of. And then G represents that portion of development and other charges with the commissioner considers is applicable to such property. Okay, then B, any allowance so deducted shall be included as income in his return for the following year of assessment and shall form part of the income of the said taxpayer. If any such agreement is ceded or otherwise disposed of for follow consideration by the taxpayer, then no such allowance shall be made by the commissioner in the assessment in which such session or disposal took place. Okay, so let's uh, try to understand this uh, section uh, using an example, a short example. So the example is saying, Mr. Moyo uh, bought land for 70,000 and developed it at a cost of three fifty thousand, ah, uh, thirty thousand. 
you subdivided it into five equal sized plots. Each plot is sold for one twin under the following terms. Number one, deposit of 12,000 payable in year of the sale and the balance in equal installments of uh, the following two years. Uh, second is transfer to be effected upon payment of final installment. Then two plots, one plot and two plots were sold in year one, year two, and year three respectively. Selling expenses amounted to 40,000 in the first year and thereafter increased by 20% from the previous year. The selling expenses are only charged in the year of sale. Required, determine the taxable income for all the years affected by this transaction. So someone would think this one is actually CGT because we are talking about land, which is a specified asset. But no, that notion is, in, is incorrect because of the nature of the required. The required is saying determine the taxable income for all the years affected by this transaction. So we can't be talking about taxable income under CGT. Taxable income, that term is only found and um, um, uh, uh, income tax. If we are under CGT, then we'll be talking about um, capital gains. And it also looks like this person is actually in the in the in the in the business of buying and developing land and then selling land. So that's actually the business model. So the gross um, uh, capital uh, amount definition will then exclude uh, the the proceeds from the sale of such land or such assets because they are uh, uh, the, the sale is included uh, under gross income. Okay. So let's go to and write down our things here. So we have year one, year two, year three. Let's just also put year four and year five. You can put as many as, as you want, but I think we can go up to year five. Then you are told that the acquisition cost was 70,000. The development cost was 30,000, giving a total of cost of 100,000. We have five plots that we, div we divided this land in five plots. Uh, that means uh, per, per, per plot, uh, we our cost is 20,000, which is 100, divided by 5. And then the selling price per plot that is costing us 20,000 is 120,000. This is the information that we have. Then we are given further information that in each year, in year one, um, uh, Mr. Moore sold uh, two plots, one plot and two plots in year three. Then if we combine the selling price of the plots that were sold in each year, we are actually saying the two plots that were sold in year one multiplied by the selling price per plot, so that's 240, the selling price with year two and year three. If we also combine the cost of the sales, we are saying the two plots that were sold in year one multiplied by the cost per plot, we are getting 40, 20, and 40 for year three. And gross profit, of course, it is the selling price minus the cost of sales. Okay, so this is what we have so far. Then look, let's talk about the payment details so that we also determine the, the, the data at each and every year. So I told that the selling price is 240, but you are actually uh, uh, you are actually um, paying 12,000. So out of the 240, the same price you are only paid twelve thousand in the year one. In year one, then the remainder is all, all of course paid over um, uh, uh, the next two years. The same price with the year number two, you are paying twelve thousand. Then the balance is paid over the next two years. Okay. Then if we calculate the balance after the, the deposit, of course it will be the selling price less what less the deposit. So we do the same for this and for this. Okay, so that means at the end of year one, we would have paid 4,000 out of 240. So our balance that is yet to be paid over the two years installments is actually 220,000. So yearly installments, because we are, we are told that we are paying over two years, uh, it means that the yearly installments will be the balance after the deposit divided by two. The sum applies for this, the sum applies for this. Okay, so that's what we have. Let's talk about data at each and every year. So if we talk about assets, uh, these two assets that were sold in year 
in year one. These two assets, we are, we are saying that if we sold these assets for a total amount of 240 and paid a deposit of 12,000 in year in that year one, that means we are left with the two, 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 200,000 in year one. That is yet to be paid over the next two years. So this 228, of course, if we pay half of it by year two, that means at the end of year two, we still have 114 that is outstanding. And we are going to pay that 114 in year three. That means at the end of year three, we don't have any, um, any, 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 any data relating to the assets that were sold in year one. Because the f there was a deposit in year one, first installment in year two, second installment in year three. We have two installments. So by end of year three, we don't have any data pertaining to assets that were sold in year one. The same thought process uh, is, uh, 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 um, uh, works for uh, assets that were sold in year two and also assets that were sold in year three. Okay, so you see that assets that were sold in year three, we sold them for 120. We made a deposit of 12. We were left with one, 108 at the end of year two. Then uh, we paid half of that in year three then half of that in year four, uh, the sample is with uh, assets that were sold in year three. Okay, so that means the total data, so of course, we are just adding uh, data pertaining to all the assets that were sold during these years. Okay, then let's talk about the allowance now that section 17 was talking about. So section 17 says the allowance, because we are selling an immoved property here, so we are using this formula. We were saying G multiplied by A, um minus f plus g so you see that e minus f plus g is actually calculating the gross profit was e is the selling price f is actually uh the the cost of uh the emo property and uh, g is actually the development cost which is g okay so uh in the the cost one uh of um 100, we have already included the development cost. So we have actually calculated here, we have actually calculated F plus G. So this 100 or the 20 per asset represents F plus G. Then E, of course, is the selling price here. Then uh, E minus F plus G, because we said this 40 represents F plus G, and E is our selling price. So that means this whole bracket to say E minus F plus G is. Yeah, we're actually calculating the gross profit. Okay, then uh, D, of course, is the data each and every year, which we have already calculated here. Then uh, we divide it by E. Okay, so the formula, if you look at it again, we are saying the data or the trade receivable at the end of the period multiplied by the gross profit divided by e so this allowance is actually given each and every year and what we change on the formula is only the g the trade receivable so if we look at assets that were sold uh in year one we are saying what is the the the, the formula we are saying if you see this c14 that is highlighted in blue is taking from gross profit c22 that is highlighted in red is taking the data at the end of year one that relates to assets that were sold in year one divided by c12 that is actually our selling price so that's the allowance then in year two because we still have a data which is 114 we still allow an allowance but what only change is d okay uh the sum applies with the last year we no longer have any data so we don't allow anything the sum applies to this one uh the formula is just the same what will be changing over years is actually the 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 um, the, the data portion otherwise the the selling price uh, the selling price and the um, uh we are talking about the same price and also the gross profit will remain the same so we are calculating this allowance for each and asset category assets that were sold in year one assets that were sold in year two and assets that were sold in year three then we add the allowance that relates to year one in total year two in total and year three in total regardless of uh the asset that was sold in that year okay so that is what we have here so you see 190 is actually the total allowance that was granted in year one then 185 is the total allowance that was granted in year two 
uh, uh, which is comprised of the 95 that relates to assets that we actually sold in year one. Because we still have a data that relates to that asset, we have to allow the, again, an allowance. And then also the assets that were sold in the current day. Okay, then let's go and answer now our required. This is an answer to our required. So what is our required asking us to do? Our required is asking us to calculate taxable income. So this line item is what our required is asking us to do. So of course, uh, we know that to calculate gross income, you start with, uh, to start calculate taxable income, of course, we start with gross income, then we list exemptions. If there are any exemptions, then we list all our directions, then we have your taxable income. So in this case, we have gross income. Of course, sales is part of gross income per section eight. So we are talking about the sales of assets that were sold in year one, the sales of assets that were sold in year two, and the sales that were of assets that were sold in year three. Year four and year five, we don't have any sales. Then we talk about the recoupment. Where are we taking the concept of recoupment? If you look at this after A, after B, C, um, uh, let's actually look at B. He's saying any allowance so deducted shall be included as income in his return for the following year of assessment and shall form part of the income of the said taxpayer. So this allowance that we uh, uh, gave uh, this Mr. Moyo in year number one shall be gross income year number two. Um, the allowance that were given in year number three and number two shall be gross income year number three and so on. So you see that in year uh, number one, because we don't have year zero where we actually claim the allowance, we don't have a recoupment. But in year number two, the 190 that we gave as an allowance in year one, this one becomes gross income in year two. And the 185 that we gave as an allowance in year two becomes gross income in year three. <laughs> So we calculate our total income. We don't have like exemptions, so that's our total income per each and every year. And a lot of deductions, of course, with the cost of sale, the purchase cost plus development cost. We calculated this above. The same. So these are the costs. We are just talking about the acquisition cost and the development cost. Then we are to also to told about the selling expenses to say uh, the selling expenses, how are we computing them? We are told that the selling expenses um, uh, 4,000 the first year, then they are going to increase by 20% per year. Okay, so that's 4,000. Then, of course, we're going to say 4,000 multiplied by 1.2 to represent a 10% increase. And also this one, 40,000 multiplied by 1.2 to represent a further 20% increase. Then suspensive sale allowance, because we said it's an allowable deduction, we are, talking the, we are taking these amounts now and put them as deductions because, yes, they are allowable deductions in terms of section um 17 so these are total deductions so you actually see that in year one this one actually is a tax as a got a taxable uh, loss or a tax loss but takes a profit in year two year three year four and year five so this was actually the 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 the, the required uh, we have actually answered the required okay so as you can see, I've put these selling expenses under the under these. Some might argue that why don't you put the selling expenses in this formula where we are saying F plus G? Because G is representing that portion of development. Of course, these are selling expenses that are not development, and other charges which the commissioner considers is applicable to such property. So someone might argue that these selling expenses relates to the property, so they should form part of G. But really, um, my my opinion is that these are actually uh, um, uh, costs that we are uh, 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 incurred when we were trying to to develop the the um, the land. And also maybe other costs that that just uh, legal really costs that relates to, to to the ownership of the land and so forth, not really pertaining to 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 the selling of the land. But anyway, this is subject to interpretation. You always do what you think is the most reasonable. 
Okay. So um, uh, that's the end of the presentation.